we're going to talk about a little history why cloud native why now uh, and then a lot about the cloud native Com computer foundation uh, what is kubernetes of course one one of the, it's not just about kubernetes it's just about is about cloud native right so cloud kubernetes of course is a large part of it but i'll give you an overview of everything else that, that runs on uh, uh, that that we, we call a cloud native architecture so and then my favorite topic the communities and what what you can do for uh, to join the community so why me why this guy i'm a cncf ambassador i'm a community organizer uh, more about that later uh, i'm a trainer so i do trainings for kubernetes uh, for uh, um for 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 the news foundation and i'm an engineer so that's that's my most important uh uh at least that, that's what i do for a living and yeah sometimes i dj or produce and uh, in my previous life um, i was a chemist so uh, you all wonder what is cloud native and uh, and why why we uh, we talk about cloud native now so this is this something that i really uh, an analogy that i really like so software is eating the world right so everything now runs on software this is the digital transformation evolution or revolution we all know that this is what is going on right now and the the the, the priority for for most organizations to to stay relevant and to stay relevant in a in a world where software runs things right so everything runs on software you may not like it you you may want to go back to uh um you, you may not like it but that's that's the way it is so software is in the world and open source eight software already uh, already decades ago uh, so all software nowadays is open source. I mean, all software that matters, right? Or, or the secure software, the matter should, the, the software should matter. Uh, you all heard about the SolarWinds hack. That would not have happened if, if SolarWinds was open source. Uh, that's a very blunt and very clear opinion. Maybe it's my opinion, but I think, uh, uh, I, I can make a, I can make a, a case about it. So open source is the way to develop software in 2021 or in, the, in, the, in this decade at least. Um, and, and not only that, but cloud is eating open source. You can argue in the beginning there was a bit more uh, the, the cloud. I mean, I'm talking about like the very beginning of, uh, of AWS. Um, uh, maybe there was a bit more focus on, on cloud source. Everything you, you you find on 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 the cloud, every public cloud, is foundationally based on open source. Not only on the underlying layers, but also everything that runs on top. Most of it that runs on top is open source. Look at Microsoft itself. Uh, is um, Microsoft itself pivot on, on on open source and is actually putting the the money where the mouth is. Every new project is open source or almost every new project is open source or there's a list of open source culture that is uh, taking over so this is why now because we are in the world where everything is software digital transformation uh, there's a huge push to the cloud this covid crisis even accelerated i think the, the trend that was already in, uh, started uh, many years ago but this definitely the, the, the remote work, the, the, the more and more digitalization of services. This is it. This is what what uh, what is happening now. So, so this is what we we this is the lands, landscape that we're looking at. That's why cloud native is so 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 crucial. And we're talking about how we get here, right? So um, so we 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 start back in the days, you know, when uh, people think that containers were invented by 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 docker they were not i mean the, the containerization uh the ideas or, or the, the the first first containerization uh attempt were, were made by by sun if you if you remember uh solaris uh, um, zones those those were the days right when we were still buying physical machines uh Put them in, in, in a rack and, uh, and run them uh, uh, very carefully. 
only few people, the, the people with the, with the lab coat were allowed close to the to those machines. So those are those were the days. But as as the evolution, as as more and more uh, the, the computer became more personal, of course, we we moved to to um, to a new phase, which is the you know the virtualization phase. I think it, it was around two thousand one. I, I personally, I remember I took the exam of, um, I'm a, I used to be a VCP, a VMware certified profession. I don't even, uh, of course, I didn't renew it. But there was, those were the days where virtual machines could abstract over physical objects like a RAM and CPU and uh, um, um, RAM and CPU and, and, and the physical boxes. And now we could offer, um, we could offer a virtual machine to our developers. So that's that's that took the, the market by storm. Uh, VMware at some point owned 80% of, of the market of virtualization. So that was really a, a phase. So you see like IT landscape comes and goes in in, um, in, uh, in waves and uh, now we are at some wave. Uh, but so after that, the move from virtualization on premise to virtualization on uh, on the cloud. So the public cloud was born. Uh, AWS created it, and we all owe AWS um, a lot because they, they really make this thing work, and they they completely shifted the, the uh, they created a market, right? So so the, the the prices model the price model changed to consumption, and that was a great uh, great success, and we all build upon that success, success right? And then. Then we have the pass. So we, at some point, some people realize, hey, we can do better than, ju than just virtualizing virtual machines, just uh, even if it's in the cloud. So they, they started to use the cloud for what it is, for, for the, uh, the, the, the consumption model of the cloud taken to the extreme. I don't know if you, many people remember Heroku, it's still around and it was really the first, uh, this is the first example of a, of a pass. And maybe they were uh, really pioneering this, and they were uh, even uh, before their, their their time. But um, but it, it was maybe not as successful as they should have been. But uh, there was a was a big innovation in, uh, in in space. And then right after that, there was a more more push to open source. Uh, I i don't know if i used to run the openstack meetup in amsterdam and it was very popular just too difficult to operate this this this, this beast called openstack and if you allow my my opinion i think uh, the community around openstack uh had some 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 uh some some too many interests around OpenStack. Obviously, it's not dead by by any by any stretch of the imagination. OpenStack is very, very well alive, but of course, it was, it's being superseded by 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 the content containerization. So OpenStack is a open source infrastructure as a service. Of course, it pivoted to containers eventually, but uh, but this was a, also a big uh, revolution in the uh, the landscape. Um, so you could finally run your own cloud your private cloud or um, uh, on-premise. And th there was a big thing. And the competition that spun out of that really, I think, uh, uh, led to a lot of innovation in the space. So, and then even more open source paths like Cloud Foundry took the, store, took, took the market. Of course, it was very, very, <clears throat> very, very popular at some point. And of course, I uh, could mention also uh, Mesosphere. There were, uh, 2011, 2012, there was a lot of uh, push. This was also coinciding with the rise of uh, the big scale uh, web companies like Twitter. Mesos was born at Twitter, in fact. Um, Twitter, Airbnb. Th there was the the moment where computing reached a scale where just uh, infrastructure as a service wasn't enough and th they needed something more something extra to 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 run and that's where lots of competing uh platform like uh, like cloud foundry mesos uh, and eventually also kubernetes uh came, came along at some point in 2013 these great guys i mean uh, solomon ike and of course like all his team at dot cloud um came with the idea uh, 
not it didn't came up with the idea it just uh, took the idea of containers which have been around in linux for for so long time uh but popularize it right so put it together in in, in a in a form that could be consumed by developers uh, all across the world and this was another revolution not not a new technology no nothing uh, it, it built on on top of the shoulders of giants like uh, like c groups and uh, and uh, uh, kernel containers so docker came on, on on the scene putting this thing together and then everybody realized the power of containerizing applications. So th this was a, a great push. I remember those days, uh, DockerCon and, uh, and all my all, all the developers uh, that were in my team that, that loved this thing and they started using it and they started to 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 run containers like uh, like there was no tomorrow. And then of course things are now in the in the open. Everybody's using containers now. There was a need, of course, like Kubernetes came on, on, on the scene, and there was a need for standardization and uh, maintaining this thing outside a single uh, commercial entity, right? So uh, Google released uh, Kubernetes at the end of 2015, and immediately the realization for everybody was, this is so important and so crucial, it's going to be so crucial to to, uh, to to so many organizations that we can just let one company control it. We can just let Google own it. And Google, I think it wasn't even interested in controlling Kubernetes. But so the, the idea of uh, uh, establishing a foundation was the um, uh, arise and it was formed uh, and and then is where it is now. So with with um, and uh, dozens of of of, uh, of, uh, of members and uh, thousand developers join. So so there's an evolution, right? So we go from and you, you can tell also the technology change, but also the community around it change, right? So from commercial closed source uh, products uh, down to open standards. Like OCI is the open standard for for uh, container images and container runtimes communities and foundations to manage those, those, those projects, those, 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 that, that software. So it, it's an evolution, not only in, uh, in technology, but also in the way people uh, think about technology, the way people reason about it and the way people consume it. So uh, you go from, you know, support contract with, with a company that you can call to you got a problem with Kubernetes, you open an issue on GitHub and work with it. So, so the cloud native foundation or initially to manage the, the the project of Kubernetes, but then of course evolved into into much more, right? So and we we'll talk about the the, the foundation in a, in a second. So we move from uh, from smaller uh, so from from uh, big virtualizations layers. So when you need to virtualize all the layers, it's, it's virtual CPU, virtual RAM, virtual this, virtual everything, to lightweight uh, uh, containers that build upon the kernel and they, they rely on the kernel for, uh, for uh, interacting with the, with the underlying host. And that makes better for everybody. Uh, makes, I think this is also where I fit in the DevOps idea. So um, um, DevOps started to talk about in 2000, you know, 12, 15, uh, well, 10, because the, the, the first DevOps days in Ghent was 10 years ago. So that's, uh, that's already 10 years ago. But we started to, in the DevOps area, we started to talk about that. Uh, we, we should move away from, uh, from uh, ad hoc uh, pets uh, to, to cattle. We don't use pets and cattle anymore. We talk about, I mean, because we, we, Kettles also animals. We don't want to kill them, but the analogy is stuck around. So this where this perfect storm happened, right? I think DevOps was pushing for more automation, more lightweight, more uh, immutable uh, uh, unit of computation, and then the cloud came in, and then containers came in, and then they just uh, match made in heaven. And that's why I think. Uh, if you're doing DevOps, you also are looking at cloud native because those two ideas 
DevOps is much more than cloud native, in my opinion. Of course, like it also includes culture and and monitoring and you name it. But the the core is uh, is the push for automation, and that's where cloud native comes in. So, but cloud native is also much more than that. So microservices and so on. So on. We, we we'll talk about uh, uh, soon. So closed source to open source and community around it. So the best thing is you avoid vendor lock-in. You are open source. So your 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 um, your platform runs on every cloud, hybrid cloud. It doesn't matter as long as you are. Uh, of course, you you avoid vendor lock-in, but you are now locked in in a platform. But at least it's an open platform that you don't have to. Uh, you are not subjected to to some commercial roadmap, right? So you're still locked in, but in a in a good way, right? So uh, and of course, this is uh, as I say, like at some now everybody is is a scale up company, right? So even if you are not considering it now, but your business may need this multi uh, multi tenant nodes. Your business may need uh, to scale up quickly um, for for uh, um, unforeseen needs, right? So so this enables that uh, you have more agility, maintainability because it's uh, open source. Uh, you can um, um, you can observe. I would say also I will add here also uh, more secure because for me security software has to be open source or not at all. Uh, security by obs obscurity is, is not a thing in uh, in any. Uh, it should not be a thing. Uh, so uh, so this is another advantage of open source and uh, and cloud native and resiliency because containers are much easier to to um, to to manage than than uh, bulky virtual machines. So and more efficiency and uh, resource utilization. So somebody commented on serverless. Yes. So serverless is the is like a nuclear fusion, right? So it's always twenty years away or five years away. Uh, it's coming, but it's coming for five years now. I'm, I would say that at this point in time, of course, I don't have a crystal ball. I cannot say anything. I love serverless. I think I love serverless. The idea is, I think it's uh, it's good for some some things, but not for others. And um, again. I think the market or the, the, the landscape of servers is still fragmented. So every cloud impose more or less their way of doing things. The CNCF is a serverless working group. So the Cloud Native Foundation also recognized serverless is the future or is very important in every cloud native um, cloud native uh, architecture. So, um, oh, and uh, Sorry about that, and uh, and I also forgot to record, so that's my that's my thing. No quality drops. So unfortunately, I so I just hit the, the record button, so we'll um, maybe I'll I'll record the game. Um, so all these things, they I hope I answered the question about serverless. Um, uh, and uh, we, we can come back to serverless as well. But of course, like serverless is a part of uh, cloud native. We don't deny that. I think it's, uh, it's, it's still fragmented and good that CNCF is doing some effort to, you know, harmonize or, or make, give, a, give a better uh, uh, platform for, for serverless as well. So, so does it feel cloud native yet? I hope so. So that's uh, so the, the definition of cloud native. Of course, this is the CNCF definition. You ask and many people; they were going to give you uh, they're going to give you more um, more more answers for that. Uh, so the difference between serverless and and cloud native. So serverless is, is part of cloud native. So. If you see the definition of cloud native, cloud native is, is a, it's a development approach. So cloud native is really a way to think about how to develop and deploy software um, using uh, ideas or concepts or approaches like containers, 
service mesh, microservices, immutable infrastructure, and declare the API. So if you use these ideas, not all of them, of course, like uh, you, you may mix and match, then you are partially cloud native. But um, if you are, if you have this approach to software development, you you may you can call yourself cloud native. Of course, I mean, there's no no authority no authority that uh, gives you a cloud native badge or something. But uh, the cloud native company foundation mission is to foster to um, to make to to make this concept these ideas, these approaches to software development more consumable, more uh, more mainstream, um, and more um, and more easy to adopt, right? So it's a collection of uh, of approaches, of course. But the idea is um, um, that that it's a collection of uh, of uh, of uh, this approach. Uh, I like the tools. Need yeah, yeah. We'll talk about uh, the tools in in, in a bit. Um, when we talk about the trail map of cloud native, so so all these things are great uh, and serverless fits in this because you can do you can do microservices with, with serverless. You can of course immutable infrastructure, the cloud API part of uh, I mean you, you use serverless for for those right. So so and nowadays also um, uh, you can run containers in serverless. So that's I think it's the best approach because it kind of uh, gets you away from the from the cloud lock-in. Once you have your application, your code containerized, you can run it in any different deploying deploying met models like Kubernetes or, or or serverless on Kubernetes and so on and so forth. So it's uh, serverless is really like on-demand computing, and this fits in uh, even if it's not explicitly in the definition of the CNCF, but serverless. Does fit in these all ideas, but thanks for for talking about serverless. It's also maybe uh, I want to do more serverless, just that uh, I do so much Kubernetes, no, no time left. So why organizations are adopting cloud native, and why you as a developer should adopt cloud native is that is because first of all, it's more efficient. Uh, you have more resiliency availability. We talked about this, and uh, you are free to go to any cloud. Uh, you have you achieve portability by adopting the cloud native paradigm, right? So, um, and if you're a developer, this is the best thing because it means that you can collaborate beyond your team in your company. You can you can move it move move your code around. You can uh, uh, you, you can it's better for collaboration as well. So it's 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 a good thing to have. And if you're an infrastructure person like uh, I would say like I was um, um, uh, cloud native was this this development below so it's a way to provide developers with uh, all the cloud native tools that they need to to express their uh, their uh, their application so it's it's not an cloud native is not just an infra model like a, like a, uh, in chat um, it's a, for me, it's an application development and deployment mode, right? So you, you are architecting a, 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 a new application or re-architecting a, um, a re an existing application, you can make it cloud native by adopting this principle. So, but of course, like uh, nowadays, the, the, the development and infrastructure, they're closely related, right? So. So um, if you want to if you want to have uh, cloud native applications, you need a cloud native infrastructure to deploy it, it on, right? And that means most of the time uh, Kubernetes or could be serverless, could be serverless on Kubernetes, could be uh, different ways to consume this uh, this infrastructure. So it, it's it's the same old infrastructure in the end, right? I mean, uh, uh, in the end, a Kubernetes cluster is made of virtual machines. So it's the same old infrastructure, but now through automation, through containers, it's consuming a different way. So it, it's consuming a better way, I would say. I'll love to hear your opinion later. I mean, uh, about um, um, serverless and how they interact. I think nobody really figured it out. There is a great project, OpenFAS. Uh, if you want to hear more, it's it's a it's another ambassador. Uh, Alex Ellis. So, if you um, if you have the chance, if you're interested, 
this is a project that I personally support. It's called OpenFast. It's an open source project part of the CNCF landscape. Um, I can type it here. Uh, open fast and it's a great project to start with uh, serverless on kubernetes so please uh, please go go there and uh, say hi to alex uh, on my behalf um so the linux foundation so the cloud native foundation is a daughter of the linux foundation is is, is in this under the same umbrella uh, the linux foundation is is a I think it's it's an awesome place to to be um it's established in 2000 to manage Linux, as everybody realized that Linux uh, would play so big a role in our lives, so they needed to to take this thing away from, from a commercial entity and uh, establish a foundation. And uh, there's more than a thousand members, um, uh, 255,000 developers work on Linux foundation projects, including Kubernetes. There's uh, um, more than 100 million lines of code, and uh, so many people years and uh, estimated total share value created is 50 billion. I mean, this is uh, higher than uh, some states uh, uh, um, gross, gross domestic product. So this is a, a force for good in the software, in, 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 in the world really, uh, through software, try to change and try to make, uh, make uh, to create a better world. There are 95 projects, there's much more than Linux, so it started with Linux, but of course now even things like Less Encrypt is a Linux Foundation project. Uh, Hyperledger, which is a blockchain uh, project, is part of the, and is very, very popular. Many, many projects you may not have heard of, they are part of the Linux project. So, and they, they sometimes they, they power, uh, they power, um, uh, big infrastructure like SEN, super, uh, super popular uh, hypervisor and so on and so forth. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the Linux Foundation. Now the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, um, um, all right, so debate about servers, that's, I love it. Uh, and I, I would like to jump in, but I want to finish the presentation first. So the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, again, it was born in 2015 to specifically to manage Kubernetes, right? And nowadays, so this, I just took it today from the website, there's 111,000 contributors to all the projects. Um, the, the mission is to foster cloud native, for example, by offering a free Kubernetes EDX course. And a lot of people went through the course and I hope it's useful. Uh, and, uh, and there's a lot of, uh, there, there are communities around it. Uh, I think it's been Kubecon year uh, five. Also organizing events and on, and helping the lo local communities like like ours to uh, to promote those ideas. So, so lots of people, CNCF meetup members, we're talking about the community and what uh, what the meetup is. So there's a structure. Of course, as, a, as an, every foundation is a non-for-profit, so everything uh, they make is actually sent back to the Linux Foundation, which invests back in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the foundation mission, to foster the foundation mission. There's a governing board, it's a marketing committee. One very important part of, uh, of uh, the foundation is the technical, the TOC, the Technical Oversight Committee, which really over, um, uh, looks, over, looks after the health of the projects, uh, make sure that um, projects are uh, onboarded properly. Uh, it's really the, the 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 part of the CNCF that deals with the technical um, with, with the with the technical projects. Um, yes, um, the end user community is us, right? So what we what we are we are the end user community, uh, and of course there is a, there are special interest group. For example, there's there's a there's a actually is a working group which is a subset of a special interest group about serverless. There is a security SIG, which takes care of security across across all projects managed by uh, by CNCF. CNCF really is, is a project maintainer, right? I mean, it's not only that, of course, is a mission to to you know, know uh, but but the most part of it is to actually help 
open source projects succeed and uh, be uh, being adopted. So, so you can think of a CNC, of CNCF as a as a big group of uh, of maintainers for for open source projects. So and and uh, uh, so you can join. Uh, there's a lot of people in the, in already. Uh, so it's a big big uh, big community. And they, all these people pay money to be part of the foundation. I mean, it's foundation because foundation doesn't take any spawn, but only accept uh, um, uh, only only charges a fee. Means that can be completely independent, and there's no special place. I mean, it's not like um, no. The representation is is only based on your contribution to the community. So if you contribute, if um, if you contribute to the community, you get back the fact that you are uh, more involved and the and the and you know, But everybody is welcome. Um, I, well, I, I mean, and and it's a it's a it's a large community of of uh, of companies and uh, uh, commercial entities that, that that have a stake in the cloud native. So it's pretty big, uh, and their partners so that offer. Uh, most of the time is certified Kubernetes uh, uh, distribution, but sometimes also uh, goes beyond Kubernetes. But all these people they 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 apply to be a certified Kubernetes part partner is also training partners, and um, and um, so they, they are trusted by the foundation to to offer a, a high quality service to to the community. So it's not for profit, uh, as I said, and so these are the project. Currently, um, these are the project currently managed by. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll answer more about service. So these are the project managed by the, by the foundation. So in the beginning, there was only only really Kubernetes, uh, and it was even an incubating project. And then in two thousand nineteen, uh, early two thousand eighteen, was the first one to graduate. Uh, so graduated projects are kind of special because. They are, let's say, production ready, or there's such a big community around it. There's such battle tested and proof that uh, that, that the CNCF approves them to, to use. So uh, notable project here is Envoy, uh, which is the base of, uh, well, let's say, 90% of the service meshes out there. Core DNS, which is an integral part of every Kubernetes cluster. But also things uh, like Elm, of course, and one of the first projects was donated to, to the foundation, and ContainerD, which is what uh, kind of replaced the Docker runtime in Kubernetes, uh, and is quickly becoming de facto standard in container runtime for uh, for uh, for containers. Project, which are projects have been there for a while, and they have. Be, they, they are all managed by the CNCF, so there's a there's a community around, a pretty big community. They they are um, they are maturing, so to say. So and uh, there's uh, all these are pretty popular and pretty uh, stable, of course. But they, they still need a bit of uh, adoption, so to say, to uh, to move into the graduation phase. There is a there's a um, there's very strict. Um, I mean, there, there, there are rules. You have to apply, and you have to you have to do due diligence before you you being accepted as a as a as a incubating, then as a as a as a even more as a I mean as a incubator incubating incubator project, and then as a as a graduate project, and then there's a a large number of sandbox. So if you have a project, and I I tell everybody, I mean it's a I can help. I mean, we we uh, uh, you don't need a sponsor per se, but uh, but uh, I can just show you how to apply as a sandbox project. So it will be it will be great if you have an open source project and you want to really give it like a big push uh, to apply as a sandbox. So if you have an open source project that has anything to do with with cloud native, it's a um, it's a great to um, it's a great. Uh, to apply for uh, to be included in the in the cloud native computer foundation. So, in a way, you have to relinquish control of your project because you realize that the project is bigger than yourself, or, or, or uh, 
bigger than uh, than you 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 could ever uh, achieve. So this is this is a way to um, it, it, it's a trade off. You relinquish control, but on the other end, you get the marketing of Cloud Native Foundation. Cloud Native Computing Foundation. You get the community. The 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 um, you get the the uh, the exposure that the Cloud Native um, um, the Cloud Native uh, Foundation can offer. So and that's the maturity in the beginning is like a crazy new project uh, part of the of uh, Sandbox, and then when they they start to be adopted, and then eventually becomes like a part of every 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 architecture. If you look at this, so you don't even know that you're probably you don't even know that you're using Container D because you're running Kubernetes in uh, Google Cloud or, or or Azure, but you are actually using it. So it's so so good and so stable that it's just a part of the landscape, right? So it's it's in the background, it works, and uh, it does its job, and, uh, and uh, you don't even need to know about it. So why you should host the project at, at uh, CNCF? Of course, you get endorsement. You, you have technical oversight committees made of big names in industry and they, they can look at your problem and suggest it, if you get rejected the first time it's not a big deal you get you cannot reapply it uh, they, they should they the rejection is not just a, a one-liner is fairly articulated way to uh, uh, is, is, is articulated so you can actually improve your project even if you get um, rejected so personal cloud native stack uh, I use what <laughs> I also try different things, but this is something that uh, really helps uh, cloud native adoption. It's a project from from the cloud native computing foundation. It's the trail map uh, is the landscape of cloud native com computing tools and software and platforms. Um, so the idea was to give some, of course, like some some guidance, some a trail map, so you can follow the trail map down to the containers, uh, container runtime. Uh, see at the very bottom, you got things like the registry, the container runtime. Uh, then on, you build on top like messaging, like uh, cloud events and uh, NATs, which is a sort of a, of a queue for a, a cloud native uh, queue. Databases, network, service pros, proxy and, and service mesh. And then of course, uh, application orchestration like Kubernetes and Elm and observability and eventually CICD. So this is all good. And that's just one way to look at your uh, stack. And the idea is that everything here is interchangeable. Everything here is, is, is not set in stone. Uh, uh, Rancher is not part of CNCF. So they could apply it yet. So thing is, as I said, you have to relinquish control of your project. So Ranch is, uh, I'm not talking of, on behalf of uh, SUSE, of course, but I suppose it's part of their commercial strategy, right? So they still want to have control. I mean, they, they, they want to define the roadmap. They want to define uh, the feature that goes in because they're customers and stuff. But if you, if you apply and then your project is accepted in the CNCF, actually migrates under the GitHub organization of CNCF, and you don't, well, you don't control it anymore. It's just one of the maintainer, but it's not always uh, desirable, right? So, so this is the trail map. It's one way to look at it. Of course, there's so much more choice. Everything can be replaced, everything. I mean, you don't like Elm, you can use the operator, fr operator framework or, or customize. You don't like Kubernetes, great. You may use Nomad. So all these things are, part of the landscape. So this, this tries to collect, uh, it's like the periodic table of uh, cloud native. Um, um, uh, if you have seen the cloud, the, the periodic table, here's the chemist coming up, the periodic table of DevOps, this kind of periodic table for cloud native. And they saw everything is in there. Of course, not everything. There must be some product that, that escaped this, uh, um, the, this picture. There's no serverless in his own box. Uh, but ideally, you could replace um, components in your stack 
by exchanging components. So this is a great thing. It's, it's also interactive. Um, so you can go to l.cncf.io and build your own stack in a way, right? So, and um, some of these, of course, like the, the big, the, the bigger ones are CNCF project. CNCF just that, that, that doesn't love you less if you use another project. So that's, that's, that's great. So that's a great tool from, uh, from um, uh, CNCF. So what is Kubernetes, right? So that's the first thing somebody was asking how to pronounce this thing is Kubernetes. I have great friends and they told me that's how you pronounce it. Um, it's, apparently it's not a very common word in, in Greek, at least that they look at me like, uh, why are you saying this word? But that's that's how you could, there's also a YouTube video how to pronounce Kuber, Kubernetes. Uh, so that's how I try to pronounce it the, the right way, Kubernetes, but sometimes Kubernetes comes out. But uh, so, you know, it's not the right way. But what is Kubernetes, right? So it's a container orchestration platform. So you got your application containerized, great. Runs on my machine, awesome. Runs on a single server in, in the cloud, okay, better, but still not scaling. Uh, and then I, you know, I need to get this thing in production. I need, uh, you know, like a scaling, I need, uh, I need uh, backups. Uh, and so on. So that's why I need a container acquisition platform. Uh, the, unfortunately, uh, late Duncan, uh, former uh, um, um, uh, director of CNCF, passed away last year, unfortunately, um, called it at Kubecon 2019, a platform to build platform. So C you have to see Kubernetes as just a building block or or more like a Lego box where you can take things and, and build a bigger thing out of it. Uh, Chris Nova, and I really like that. It's like machines that control machines. Kubernetes is really like a, a control loop for applications. So it manages your application, monitors them, make sure that they are healthy and constantly constantly iterates over this, this, uh, this, this, uh, uh, this loop. Uh, and this is one of the best part. This is not a per se, I mean, uh, we, we can have another interaction to Kubernetes, but, uh, uh, and uh, I also I also do trainings in Kubernetes, so please reach out if you want to know more. Maybe we should do uh, another webinar. Uh, and for me, it's an innovation engine. The idea of adopting Kubernetes helps with kickstarting innovation, we call it digital transformation, whatever in your organization. So for me, that's that's the main point. Even if you don't need Kubernetes per se right now, you should adopt it because it will help you and your developers uh, uh, be more productive. So I'm, I only have 10, 10 minutes left. So this is uh, Kubernetes in one slide. So it's basically a way to manage like machines. Uh, so putting all together, putting nodes under one control plane, and so they can be run your application as containers in um, in um, uh, easily. That's the popularity of Kubernetes. Super good. Uh, the second most uh, uh, popular project on GitHub. Um, there is a certified Kubernetes distribution. I'm gonna go fast, but of course I'm gonna share the slides. So there's a there are a few providers out there, of course, like the big names like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, they're certified providers, but also smaller names like DigitalOcean and, and so on and so forth. So um, the training, so there's a new training uh, available, which is security specialist, uh, which I'm glad I passed uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but so you can get certified and that helps a lot in your, uh, your career, I can tell. I mean, I, uh, I can assure you. Um, so they're not easy exam to pass. Uh, we can talk about it uh, in a bit. Uh, there are events you can attend. Kubecon uh, used to be a big, like a eight, 10,000 people event. Uh, and now of course it's all virtual uh, and it's quite cheap. I think it's still $70 to get in, but also reach out, I can give you a discount. As a, as a community member, uh, I'll post it on uh, on uh, on the meetup page. Um, 
so the events is it, the events are kind of the 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 soul of this thing right so where we used to meet in person now we would just meet in, in uh, virtually but still a uh, place where you can learn a lot all the presentation of the events are on, on youtube so there's a youtube channel on uh, on uh, for, for the cncf and you can find all the presentation from all kubecons uh, ever there so um and then community groups um, and I'm, um, I miss one, but uh, uh, I'll tell you in, in the chat. So we used to have a meetup and I'm still, organ I mean, I'm still in the, I mean, we still look at the meetup as a platform, but cloud native computing moved to a new uh, platform called community.cncf.io. So that's, uh, uh, that's where you should go now. To be honest with you, as a, community we decide to take a break uh during corona because we are a local community we're not we're not about uh webinars and uh, and uh, uh the, more or less the, the presentation were just an excuse to meet talk to each other uh, eat a pizza and uh, and a beer so we decide until we can do it again safely and we we can do it like a, without uh, stressing out we're not gonna do too many webinars or too many uh, online meetups. That, that's a decision uh, that we made, and I, I, it's it's what it is. I mean, I, I hope it's gonna be this year. So we still have the meetup. Please join. It's also we also post news there. We organized the the Kubernetes Committee Days, which was a like a smaller version of Kubecon in Amsterdam in, 20, in 2019. It was a great success. Uh, we were looking forward to 2020, and now we look forward to 2021. Hopefully, in September, we might be able to, to offer a, a, a community event. So uh, thanks for the question. So let me go through. OK, Rancher, yes, as I told you, it's not exactly part of CNCF, so that's why. It's, it's, it's in the landscape. I think just, uh, well, maybe it should be there. Um, Elm, Elm is part of Cloud Native, actually. is one of the popular. Uh, OK, some discussion about Rancher. Tecton is part of uh, uh, CNCF, I'm not sure. Ah, Tecton like, lives in the CICD Foundation, which is another foundation of the uh, of the Linux Foundation. It's a it's a daughter foundation. Uh, so of course, like it's a CICD tool, so it should sit in uh, in, um, in in CICD Foundation. So there won't be. We don't know. I mean, uh, Kubecon was supposed to be in Amsterdam in March 2020 was of course like a uh, canceled april um who knows i mean honestly i mean uh, i would uh if i knew i would have bought but i didn't so that's it so it, it's all open to 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 question i mean uh, we hope i hope i was really looking forward to 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 meet everybody in my hometown what i called my hometown but uh, but it, it, it ain't happened so um Best place to start learning about Kubernetes. Great. So one more thing about yeah. So um, first of all, uh, there is there is the CNCF website. There's a, a link to the EDX course, and it's great if you are into um, into learning on your own. Right? It's a it's part of EDX, so it's a you have to do it yourself. Right? So and then there are. Uh, workshops online and Drea is online and can uh, I also uh, used to and they gives workshop about that I do things when we had the meetup running we did a few Kubernetes one-on-one workshops so that would be a great place maybe we should do it online again maybe maybe I'll, I'll ask uh, somebody to um, yeah yeah I'm, uh, I'm looking at the questions um, uh, maybe we should do more workshop about Kubernetes the idea is that so we want to be an inclusive community. It doesn't mean only, of course, minorities, but it also means we want to be inclusive of the of who doesn't know Kubernetes yet, right? So of the newbies or or the the starters. So um, so that's why it's, it's, it's a question. In fact, that says I hear criticisms that 
Kubernetes is too complex for most use cases. Uh, yes, it's true. And that's why we as a community and CSCF, CNCF is a, is a foundation wants to make it more simple. I mean, we can just make the code more simple, but we can help people understanding the, the code. So, um, so, so that's, that's, that's the idea. I hope we're doing a good job. If not, please tell us, I mean, join the community and help us do a better job. That's, that's the thing. So yes, so the question number one, the best place to start to learn about Kubernetes, the cncf.io website and the, the, the excourse or come to, uh, to our community. So there's a, there's a Slack, slack.kts.io and we have a channel there called, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pass it in the chat, uh, slack.kts.io and the channel is called ML users. So the Dutch users community tends to um, tends to uh, gather there. At least come come find me there. Um, yeah, um, workshops. Yes, we. I think it's time. We did a workshop in Utrecht in two thousand nineteen. So I think maybe you know maybe it's time to to organize a workshop online. So I have two minutes left. Let me see if there are more questions. So. Uh, I'll, I'll pass the link to the slide, of course, in a bit, uh, in, in a minute, actually. Let me do it now before I forget, of course. Uh, and uh, so what else? Who has any more questions? My personal cloud native stack, well, you know it. Uh, probably Azure, AKS as a, as a base, but also I do a lot of operators nowadays. So it's uh, it's important to to stay up to date. So let me, let me quick pass the link to the slides and then I'll, uh, I'll say goodbye to everybody. Uh, should have prepared it, but uh, let me see. So, so I'll, I'll send. Uh, I hope uh, well, you know where to find the slides. Uh, um, yeah, just uh, sorry that I should have exported the presentation before. But uh, but you know what? I can just give you the link to the. Of course, it started to actually print the slides on the picture. Anyway, so I'll send a, a come to the NL users, and you're now incentive to come to the NL users uh, Slack uh, to find the slides because that's where I'm going to post them. So uh, if you have uh, if you have more questions, um, reach out to Kate. Uh, thanks, Kate, for uh, for the opportunity, and uh, uh, I wish everybody a good Thursday. <laughs>